but how does it go? How does it go? This is a big test for them tonight. If they can produce a victory here, then we have to take them seriously. But Wigan will be fighting all the way, and they get an early chance with possession with Thompson, who brings it back. And it, it, you could almost argue that the starting 13 is a little stronger this week than it was last, because Luke Thompson is back in that squad. Yeah, well, he brings so much, doesn't he, to any team that he plays in. And I, I'm just looking at Huddersfield here and thinking, right, I've just come off a shellacking against Saints. Didn't score a try, didn't score a point, conceded 28. What a challenge this is today for them. Up against the World Club champions. If I'm in a Huddersfield jersey, I'm thinking, right, OK, I'm going to give you some of this now. Just a reminder for those who are late joining us as well of the team news tonight, Wigan bringing back Luke Thompson and uh, bringing on young hooker Tom Forber on the bench in the absence of Mike Cooper and Cruz leaving, but also a very late, late change in that Chucky Chan takes his place in the 17 tonight because of an injury in the warm-up to Liam Byrne and Huddersfield with just that one change. Jake Connor back in their starting 13 and uh, it's as though he's uh, got a little poke in the eye. Early stages does Jake and his clue out of dummy half, moving it left and Huddersfield beginning to move it forward. First touch of the ball for them here tonight. First set that they have to try and impress themselves on this game. Eason Masters towards that halfway line. Pushed away by Adam Milner. Congratulations, by the way, to Adam Milner, who's um, playing tonight. There was a s suggestion he might have been missing out because um, his, uh, his partner was due to give birth. Anyway, the baby has been born, so little Betty is here. So congratulations to Adam, who's a father. And Wigan with a kick down field, and Jay Field will collect 15 metres out from his own line. Well, it's a good kick down, putting Jay Field under a bit of pressure. It's just what they do on the next couple of players, knowing how strong they are bringing the ball away with Liam Marshall and Abbas Miski. You can see both of them here now getting their hands on the ball. Explosive speed, put the nose through the line, want to land on the front and play the ball as quickly as possible. It's Marshall now, he's up to play it, O'Neill out of dummy half as Thompson again takes it forward with some purpose. Looking to rediscover the form he had a few years back in the Super League before he went to the NRL. What about the man playing the ball, Tyler Dupree? I think this is just his 12th game. He's won the League Leader Shield, he's won the Grand Final World Club Challenge. Incredible, you can play 400 games and don't win them sort of trophies. Here's Elliot Wallace on the return. And a word as well, I saw a stat this week. Matty Peat has won everything and he's only yeah. been coached for 66 games. Incredible, isn't it? It's extraordinary. Few, and a few years ago, like, people were thinking, right, we've just gone for the cheap option, giving Matty Peat the, the job. Well, let me tell you, he might have been inexperienced, but he's not the cheap option now, is he? He'll be wanted by most clubs. So 66 games in charge. And he's won a Challenge Cup, a League Leaders' Shield, a Grand Final, and now a World Club Challenge as well. Huddersfield looking to advance here. Here's Hewitt. Good 10 metres or so inside that Wigan half. Milner up at dummy half. Now with Clune. Looking to see what he's got on here. The pass is away to Russell and further left they search. Masters with a step off the left foot back on the inside, but Wigan's defence is ready for that. Yeah, Jack Connor just giving him the ball, to Masters the ball early, just to, trying to get him a one on one. Swift with a pass on the inside. The play the ball wasn't the cleanest, but they've um, somehow got away with it. The kick forward is not the best either. And Murphy, I think, has um, decided there might have been an accidental offside here. Anyway, it's um, it's going to be Wigan to get possession back again. Yeah, that's that's what happened, Dave. You're quite right. Scrappy end to the set, really. It was a poor pass originally that went above Jake Connor's head. And they didn't get the kick away that they wanted. And unfortunately, they've just gifted Wigan probably 20 metres. Here's O'Neill, and here's Farrell. With a little step on the inside again. Adam Milner's uh, youngster is not the only new kid on the block as well. Congratulations to Terry O'Connor, who's become a grandfather for the first time today. <laughs> More of that in just a second, because Wigan are looking good here. Miski on that right-hand side with the width. He stopped in his tracks, but Wigan have got a fantastic position here. It's field out of dummy half. Wigan searching left now. Ellis will straighten things up. Help! Waltzed around. Three, the keen Huddersfield defenders. Tackle still in the bag. O'Neill goes out of dummy half. French again with the short pass. Isa tries to push his way through. But with five gone, Wigan are 12 out. French back to Smith, who left footy kicks to back to where it came from and Swift is up there but look at that for defensive cover 
That's brilliant, brilliant from Adam Kieran. Huddersfield are forced to drop out underneath the sticks. Yeah, well, they never give in, do they, the Warriors? They're renowned in the game for having a, a strong mentality. They press really hard, they put you under some pressure. The kicking game goes in, and they don't. The kick's only as good as the chase, and Adam Kieran times it to perfection. And more possession to the Warriors. So another set of six to come. Huddersfield are going to take as long as they like. Well, for the Warriors here, and I'm sure they're just going to keep turning up for each other. They know that some players are going to have to perform at a real high level. And you look at you look at this man who's got the ball, Luke Thompson, lasted just 17 minutes in the opening game, missed, obviously, the World Cup challenge because he failed the HIA. He'll be one of those players. Why don't they go with Dupree? Tyler Dupree. Twisted round and down he goes. So here comes O'Neill. French has come back towards the middle. The general at the centre of things. Kate Ellis on again by another strider too. They are poised at the moment, Wigan. Huddersfield's defence needing to be sharp. It's a, a dummy by field, but it's not bought. And Wardle slips into that acting half roll. Now it's back with Smith. Along the line he searches. And this again just uh, driving it in. Well, there's the platform. There's one play to go here. And Wigan have got a central position from which to work. It's back with Field. Field now trying to create the numbers. The juggle by Marshall, he couldn't drag it in. And Huddersfield get it back. Well, that was the same sort of player that they used last week. It was Bevan French who threw the ball over on the right-hand side to Abbas Miski when he scored the ball. The first ball, they love doing it. Go down the short side, throw the ball across a number of your teammates, and they're willing to just play, aren't they? Everyone looks at Field and French and see what they can do. They're not just full of speed, but they've got some skill about them as well. Little granddaughter, I believe, Terry. Yeah, that's that's a sign, really. You're officially old now, aren't you? That's it, beautiful little granddaughter. Mum's doing well. So, yeah, exciting, exciting. Fantastic news, well done. Not that you had much to do with it, but well done anyway. This is Huddersfield looking to escape their own half. But Wigan's defence, well, is a little too robust on that occasion. Miski came in and the referee has given a penalty here. Yeah, well, they like to jam in, don't they? Aggressive defence out on the edge. Abbas Miski, well, nothing's going to get get past him. The speed of the line, you've got to nominate. You've got to look at the players unfolding. When it's time to just make that tackle, you've got to make it unfortunate for the referee. It's a penalty. So, Ollie Russell will look for touch here. His dad, of course, Richard, was a former Wigan player, wasn't he, back in the day? Castleford also claim him. And I'm sure his dad is proud watching on here today, watching his son against his former side. He won a World Club Challenge, didn't he, Richard yeah, he did. Russell, back in the day? He was another good player, wasn't he? This is Kujo. Kujo's managed to get himself and his team beyond that 30-metre mark, so things are looking up here for Huddersfield at the moment. Milner out, looking left to Russell. It's uh, Connor who's joining in. Trying to provide the bullets on that left-hand side, and this is good from Murchie, who's away from the first lot of defenders, but then he's dragged down. Huddersfield in the best position they've been in so far in this game. It's back with Clune. Clune to Connor. Quick hands from him. Nagama tried something similar, but it's a little sloppy. Gone behind for Wallace. Straightened back up again here by Nagama. And Huddersfield still have position. It's not a restart. A couple of tackles still to go, that's all. Kutjo. Back with Russell again in that pivotal role, Murchie. Last play, Huddersfield. Milner goes left, Russell again, slides it towards that in-goal area, but Miski had it read, not only that, he's got an ability to uh, get his side back into decent position. Yeah, it's good play and good vision, isn't it? The kick, first of all, from Russell was good, but just pounced on by Miski, gets his team back in the field of play. They have the ball. Huddersfield now just trying to turn the screw themselves with some decent fast line speed. But that's what Marshall gives you, not just scoring at the other end. Just look what the impact that he does bringing the ball away. And on the back of that yeah. impact, that's the penalty. He's got so much urgency, Dave, to get up and play the ball. You know, he's not the biggest of wingers. He knows how to finish tries. But if you're a big forward in a cherry and white jersey, you really do appreciate wingers like that. Harry Smith will find touch, and Wigan will find themselves 10 metres short of the halfway line. Here's Smith. Good twist and a turn, but the tackle's successful anyway. O'Neill. French again. 
Dupree with the shoulders in and the back turn, hoping to get that ball away, but there's arms around him up top, so he can't find any freedom for the offload. O'Neill, French again, has made a late run from one side to the other, back to the middle from that left-hand side. Here's Smith, Fields chiming in, Field gets the pass away to Kieran, and Miski now... Well, he, he saw the way was blocked. He was looking for an inside pass, and I think he's got that off a Huddersfield hand. I think Wigan get it back here. Yeah, well, they had to make a play for it, didn't they? Because they had cut them loose down that. They played with so much depth from, depth from what the halfbacks do when they go to the line. They fix defenders. They just keep them honest. And when Harry Smith gets the ball, he straightens it up, delivers the ball. He's already attracted <laughs> two or three men to him, which then creates the overlap, overlap on the outside. Unfortunately, just can't get the ball inside, Miski. This field, and now it's Wardle. Uh, Such an effective down. centre player, Jake Wardle. Once of Huddersfield, of course. Inside it goes for the drive of Ellis. It's O'Neill looking to deliver again. Field with the pass away, and Marshall with a step back on the inside against the grain. Wonderful left foot step. Two defenders left flat footed as a result. And Wigan have the lead with 11 minutes play. Well, that's it, you just wedge in, don't you? You know what's coming in front of you, but you just can't quite stop it. And Marshall does ever so well to score the try. The first points go to the Warriors. Marshall gets over that left foot step that he's renowned for. So much strength when he comes off it. But it was the build-up play where they just took Huddersfield apart over on the left-hand side, players jumping out the, the line to try and create something, try and stop something, but it's just about the time that they have with the ball, and when you've got the likes of Jay Field controlling the left-hand side, you've got Bevan French controlling the right-hand side, it's going to spook defenders, and that's exactly what happened there to Huddersfield. Well, that's a blast of enthusiasm that's just been uh, pumped into this Wigan crowd as well here tonight. Huddersfield fans behind the sticks, just a little deflated at the moment. There's some travelling to do for Huddersfield fans as well in these next few weeks. I don't think they're at home much, and it's one game in the next six that they're actually at home. So home comforts are not to be theirs for a while. They're doing it tough just at the moment. So Harry Smith looking to add the two to the four provided by Marshall. He's settling himself here. And has he found the target? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. That will settle him into the game, undoubtedly, as well. Wigan leading by six points to nil. Well, they always knew that they were going to come out and try and get the first points just to really unsettle Huddersfield and probably calm their nerves as well. And I said the ball, it's a clean ball from dummy half from Brad O'Neill. And the step from Marshall, well, he's been doing that to teams the last few years, hasn't he? And it's often said he's a player that goes under the radar a little at Wigan, isn't he? I mean, he does get his um, his uh, Do you know what hats is? on the back, but you know some of the more, more flair players, the the Frenches, the the uh, Fields, they they tend to get more of the headlines. Yeah, they do. But you talk to any player in Super League, and he's well respected. Everyone talks about how dangerous he is. Like I said, bringing the ball away, always looking to score points, but also he does all the dirty work as well with the forwards. Here's Dupree. Square up, Seb! So, three tackles gone, field. and Wigan find themselves almost up to the uh, the 30 metre mark and beyond. This field desperate to keep this go forward to a minimum from Wigan. That's behind the 40 metre mark, but Connor's got that read easily enough and intercepts with the catch. And here comes Elliot Wallace. One of, their, uh, one of their new signings this season, Elliot Wallace, of course. Yeah, the 23-year-old coming from Castleford, didn't he? Big, powerful, strong, strong winger. He turns the ball well. I love to see Jay Connor just get his fingerprints on everything. And just give his half racks in, in the likes of Clune and Russell just a bit, a bit more time. 
So there's plenty of other action going on tonight as well. And uh, Castleford winning early, leading early against Warrington. So that will, uh, that will be shaking the locals at the Halliwell Jones Stadium, I'm sure. This here at Wigan is Sam Hewitt. He's rounded up by three Wigan defenders and dragged back a yard or two. So Milner collects a dummy half again, could show. Trying to create that momentum. Last play inside their own half. Milner skips it back to Connor. Gets some spin on that ball as Jake Connor. It's swirling around in the air. Abbas Miski did very well to get to that. <laughs> Who would be a winger or a fullback standing underneath some of them? It was a wicked kick, wasn't it, from Jake Connor? Like I said, he could be that, that point of difference. And what Huddersfield really need to do is try and control this rook area, slow them down. Here's Wardle. Smith having quickly got himself up there at dummy half, and that's a good carry by the former Huddersfield man. A little ripple of applause from the Wigan fans in appreciation. Now it's Farrell. O'Neill again. Really have dominated positions so far in the game of Wigan. And they're here again, French out to field. Field now, Kieran. Dub is back on the inside and has the support, and ain't that delicious? Isn't that a super try to watch? Better French finishes in, but they unpick the threads of that Huddersfield defence, and we're going to in for a second. It's just a training ground move, isn't it? You look with the, the hang time, I think it was French. When he passes the ball, he delivers it. It's got perfect hang time. The ball does all the hard work, and then obviously backing up, supporting in the middle of the field. Well, that's Wigan on the right-hand side. They are so good. And Miski did ever so well, catch that ball under a bit of pressure. They go up the other end, and the ball that goes from Bevan French is just delightful to Jay Field, who then creates the space. And there's so unselfish in the players. Whenever they're playing the Warriors, whether it's in defence or attack, they're always just looking. Give the ball to somebody else who's in a, a better position. And Adam Kieran supplies a lovely offload back on the inside to the man who initially supplied him with the ball. Well, they are relentless at the moment, Wigan, aren't they? It's amazing what confidence does, isn't it? Confidence, lack of confidence. Everything yeah, seems to be flowing your way. We talk about momentum in games and in the season. Well, the Warriors have certainly got it now. You have to go back to that dramatic Challenge Cup semi-final defeat against Hawkingston Rovers for the last time they've lost the game. And that is last summer, that's last July. It's just win, win, win ever since. It's amazing how, how games like that can really hurt you and turn your season. And that's obviously a turning point. Smith with a kick. So 100% for him so far, two out of two. And uh, you'd have to say Wigan are at 100% at the moment. You'd give them a 10 out of 10 rating, and they lead by 12 points to nil. Yeah, well, that's at least Huddersfield players now. They'll have the wobbles now. Didn't score a point last week, like we said at the start of the game. Already 12 points down, 17 minutes gone. And the Warriors were so good on the right-hand side last week. And they've certainly started the game in good form over on the left the first try the second try over on the right hand side and it's game on here for Huddersfield what have they got what can they come up with the French fancied that almost a collision with one of his own teammates but he's collected it safely and we're going to have it back again this is a real test of the Huddersfield character now isn't it you know how do you pick yourself up against the world champions 18 minutes in losing by 12 points to nil they're going to have to produce something very special from here on in, and they've given another penalty away. Well, that, that's it. The penalties won't help them, will they? You know, you've got to create a bit of magic. Like, to break down a good defensive team like Wigan, you've got to turn up for each other. You really have got to turn up for each other. And if you don't do that, it could be a, a long night, a long night at the office. So, I think Ian Watson... He knows that they've got to be really good here, really strong. Well, you can hear the ooze in the arse of the Wigan fans because they've just seen that replay. Video referee is getting involved here. There's a clash of heads there as well. Well, 
the referee is in communication with the video referee. We can't hear the video ref, but the referee himself can. And Jack Smith will be getting instructions here off Ben Thaler, Mikey Wilmslow, about where this goes from here. Milner's being called out here. It'll be a walk of trepidation because given the opening two weeks, he knows there could be a card here. There you go, low level force. So it's 10 minutes of the Simbin. It's a yellow card. Put us field down to 12. And Adam Milner's away for the next 10 minutes. And you probably know what's, what's coming, don't you, when the, the ref calls you out. And that just doesn't help the situation, does it? Yeah. Obviously, behind them, the scoreboard, 12, point, 12 men on the field now. Well, we're going to be looking to strike here with that extra man advantage. And they'll have a set of six, which is starting more or less inside their opponent's half. As Dupree takes it forward. Here's O'Neill. French shuffling it off to Ellis. He was really good last week. The, the stats from him last week. 80, 80 minutes, 21 carries, 46 tackles. Huge effort. Yeah, he was terrific, wasn't he? Ex-Penrith boy back in the day, so maybe a little bit of uh, extra reasons to put that effort in. But like you say, 18 minutes as a middle. 80 minutes is incredible. Another set of six as Jay Field. Well, that could have been an obstruction then. I think Chris Hill just couldn't quite get hold of Jay Field. In. Yeah, Smith along the line. Ellis goes again, turns in the tackle. Looks for an offload potential, but keeps a hold. O'Neill is waiting here. Wigan showing a little bit of patience. Now it comes with Field again. Field challenging the line with an initial skip. Farrell challenging the actual goal line with that surge. But Huddersfield's defence strangle the opportunity. Now it's with Wardle again. Here comes Field. This is Harry Smith. Trying to pick out someone to carry this on. And French with a chip over the top. Miski's on the chase, but Swift is back there to clear up the danger, but concede the dropper. Yeah, he could just see that coming then, couldn't he? Adam Swift, one of those players, Adam Swift, we really admire him for what he does. And he knows that he's got it all on over there on Hull's left side. He knows he's going to be challenged from the likes of Harry Smith with the kicking game and French. And he answered the questions then. He knew exactly what he needed to do. Get the ball, get it over the dead ball line, and yeah, concede a, a drop out here. They've got six tackles to put it right. And it is again to use that word relentless in terms of Wigan just showing their patience, skill in execution with a kick, and giving themselves another six goes at this Huddersfield defensive line. Well, Dave, every time they have a set of six, they're just looking at getting a result, whether that's points, field position, another set of six. Patrick May goes on the field to give them a little bit of extra up freshness. Smith back to field. Here comes Wardle and here comes Marshall. And that will be the third try of the night. Liam Marshall second of the night already. And Wigan with a consummate ease and a prolific professionalism are taking this game away from Huddersfield. Well, they're just so determined, aren't they? In everything they do, like I said, every set of six, they want to get a result. And they're certainly doing that. There's players in motion, there's support. They love the setting up from the middle of the field, and Harry Smith again, a dummy drop-off, goes out. They play out over on the left-hand side, and it's just all about movement, movement of the ball, movement of players, change direction, cut inside, and all of a sudden you've got defenders then sitting back on the heels, not knowing what's going to go on, and waiting for, waiting for help from the inside to push across. And looking for the teammates to say, look, I've got him, you push out, you push out. Well, it just seems too easy at the minute. Well, this is a scoreline that 
absolutely reflects the way this game has gone so far. Huddersfield have not had a sniff. They've, they've, they've not fired a shot, absolutely. I thought they'd come out, try and control the play, the ball speed. You know that Ian Watson's been known for working hard for each other and been defensively spot on, but they just can't handle Matty Pete's men at the minute. They're just too clinical. They're asking a lot of questions, and as I said, that when you've got halfbacks running at the line, making defenders rock back on the heels, it's always going to be difficult, and then the shots come out wide. Harry Smith just settling himself again here for the task in hand, which is yet another conversion attempt. Big deep breaths and a focus. Toughest kick of the night here so far, you'd suggest. But he doesn't make it look tough, does he? That is just strokes between the uprights. 18 points to nil. Everything Wigan have put their hands or boots on so far tonight has turned to gold. Yeah. Was it last year, the year before, the Harry Smith was getting criticised for his kicking here? Well, not now. Look, you're forward, you lay the platform, you get down, you play it as quick as you can. You've got to make those inroads. Strong carries don't be dominated from the back of that. You want good service from your halves, your full-back, your hooker, and they certainly got that, and you give the ball out wide. And you know that if you give him some space, he's going to score some points, isn't he, Marshall? Well, there's, there is plenty of experience in that Huddersfield side from Jack Connor, who just kicks it off the England international. You know, you look at Kevin Nagama, Chris Hill, Adam Clune, who's done his time and distance in, in the NRL down the years, Adam Milner. Those old heads are going to have to try to recreate an atmosphere in their side now, aren't they? Well, I said that, don't look at the scoreboard. You can only control what's in front of you, what, what's gone behind you now in the last 23 minutes. Well, you've got to get that. That's it, it's gone. You've got to come up with something. You've got to make sure that in defence, you hit your stick, you take it to ground, you work for a marker. And just don't be dominated at the minute. They're falling off tackles. Big, powerful charge from Patrick Mago. Well, one thing they could do with his ball in hand, they've not had a lot of that lately. Here's Smith. Good covering run by Wallace. Connor moves up at dummy half. And he looks, he looks up when he gets the ball, Wallace. He's got five players in, in front of him. It's like good luck trying to, to make anything of that. Ash Golden onto the field now, which will help them. They didn't, they're not a team renowned from running from dummy half, but made his name as a fullback. Ash Golden, so there'll be some speed, some injection from that dummy half position. It's a similar pattern of play to the one we saw last week in the Wigan Penrith game. The difference is that Penrith couldn't score when they were down the other end of the field, and Wigan have. And Huddersfield are doing what Wigan have had to do and just cut the ball out on the scant possession they've had so far and find themselves on the last tackle. Having to kick, Wilson fires it against Wigan legs. It's dropped on. Referee said offside. Yeah, he's offside, isn't he? Willie, it's come off everything. The kick from Ollie Russell, it ricochets, it comes back to a man who's in an offside position. Was it Willie Iser? Well, the referee showed he not play it, not play that. So I think Willie Iser thought he was onside there, didn't he? But the referee quickly corrected him. Yeah, you can see that he can't, he can't jump on that ball, though, then. So Huddersfield with a chance here to test this Wigan defence. What can they come up with? There's Hill with the initial carry. Three defenders wrapping around and putting him down. Golding is on there. This now is uh, Hewitt. Sam Hewitt. Four tackles to go. Ash Golding fresh from the interchange bench is inside to Kutjo and Kutjo, that great servant of this Giants club, will take his side to within distance. Golding and now Clue up and what a pass out wide. I think Marshall got a hand on that. I think Marshall got a hand on that and he had to. By yeah, Liam Marshall. By well, he gets his hand on the ball. Huddersfield get it. Don't be predictable. You know, watch them. I mean, watch the games last week when they played. They managed to get two offloads. Huddersfield. So again, they, they're a team that likes to work hard, cart the ball up. But they have got players. When you come up with players like this, unfortunately, it doesn't go out wide to the winger. But they have got some skillful players. 
It's all about opportunities and chances in this game. There's plenty of eye-catching talent there in those Huddersfield colours tonight. And here's one of them in Russell. Golding. Four to his left, the rest to the middle. Kudjo's one of those, again, right down the centre. And the platform is uh, built here. Golding again. Now it's Connor. Connor with a step, and another. Capable of tantalising any defence and almost finding a way through. Golding again. Hill to his left, but Golding's going to go himself. Just held up. Back they come. Kudjo tries that big muscular route, but Wigan's defence is not going to fall for that. And one play to go, finds Golding there, and he can't get it away because Wigan's defence were offside. They're offside, too keen, too eager. And again, it's uh, another set of six. They need some points here now, Huddersfield. This is exactly the position that the Giants were desperate for. And a little bit of time in possession. Golding again. Kudjo wants another carry here, but it goes behind him to Hill. Hill helps it on its way. It's not the best pass to Russell. Picked up by Connor. Connor's pushing, but O'Neill up top keeps a hold. Building again. Russell steps back. He's been tracked all the way by O'Neill. Collared him, literally. Drags him to the ground like a right door. Now it's Hill. Hill will take it in. Wiggins defence all over him. Golding. Back to Russell. Now it's Kutcho. Wigan fans are infused by their side's defensive effort here, which carries on a beat or two. And it'll be Wigan who get possession back. Well, they just get excited, don't they? In defence. Incredible. Brad O'Neill. I think the next one was Luke Thompson, was it? Come over to play then. Harry Smith. Just hunt the error. They want to keep that big fat zero where it is on the scoreboard. And they know they just can't can't sit back. Well, they're back up to 13 men here, Huddersfield, because Adam Milner's back on the field. O'Neill. Here's Isa. So Wigan having survived that sus sus sustained spell of pressure, the first they've had to survive on their own line. But Huddersfield at least heartened with the fact that they've had the ball down there. They posed a few questions. O'Neill. Young Harvey Hill's on the field now for Tyler Dupree. Okay, mate. Hill! Release! Four! Stay right! Go! O'Neill dodges right. Here comes French. Carrying it into the, uh, the defences of the Huddersfield line. Now it's Smith. End over end with a kick this time. It's going to hit the grass. But the bounce is relatively kind. And he's uh, hoisted out immediately for Elliot Wallace. And the Wigan chase again is a good one. Yeah, he's always looking to, to link up and, and play, isn't he? Jake Connor. And sometimes maybe maybe back yourself, take the ball a few few steps, maybe take the ball into tackle. Oh. Agama with a play the ball. And Swift now the winger from the other side will have a go. Three, 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 three. Milner. Relatively yeah, fresh given his time the on the sidelines. Held! Move for ten now, we're good! Go Milner again. Marcus! Marcus! Six again, Marcus! Ollie Wilson's just come on the field in place of Chris Hill, by the way, for Huddersfield. And a good spot from Adam Miller. You heard the call from the ref, the markers weren't squared. Here it is, Wilson. You know, I like his play, old style prop forward. Held! Release Paddy! Let's carry the night for him, Milner. Go to. on here. They've still got quite a few tackles to play with here. Russell away to Murchie. Murchie's dragged down. 15 out, Huddersfield again have reason to believe here. Golding, Clune, right up to the line, keeping them guessing until the very last moment with the Wigan defenders marshalling that situation. Golding, Kutjo, Kutjo straightens up. Can't get it out the back door. 
just push him back and this is the last play Milner okay, tackle five. over the head of Golding and into the hands of Kloon and Kloon throws it wide again as he tried earlier and this time it comes off with spectacular success Elliot Wallace diving in at the corner and Huddersfield well doesn't that lift them a try they desperately needed absolutely if at first you don't succeed try and try again and Adam Kloon he come over with a big reputation, then they signed a three-year deal from Newcastle Knights in Australia. Tried that play before. Liam Marshall gets his hand to it. It comes off on this this time though. And young Elliot Wallace, he just hugs that touchline and he knows that he's just got to catch the pass. The halfback does all the hard work. Look, goes in, gets the eyes of a couple of defenders, gets outside of Marshall, and he's got his speed. And he knows exactly where he is. Look at him. You can see when he gets the ball, Clune, you can see a couple of defenders just backing off because he's going to go at the line. He's got the ball in two hands. They don't know what's going to go. Is it going to be a sidestep? Is it going to be a pass? Well, it was the pass, and he absolutely nailed it to that young lad. Well, he wasn't the most consistent of players, Adam Clune, at Newcastle last year. Only played a handful of games at the back end of 2023 for the Knights, but signed as an organiser signed as somebody who could make things like that happen but he wanted a fresh start didn't he he's come over there he only played four games like you said last year for newcastle but he wanted a change he's got the change like i said he had massive raps in the nrl as a youngster and he's come over tried to ignite his career and with players like that with balls like that he certainly looks good and well, that's exactly what the coach wants to see isn't it well once upon a time in the wigan academy ollie russell now has a chance to add another two points. Starts it right and it stays right. So it isn't successful, but 18 points to four looks just a little rosier than it did earlier for the Giants. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just points on the board, isn't it? It'll give them some confidence. You know, Wallace, he goes over, scores the points, but again, the damage he's done. You see Kluman, he gets the ball, he just goes. You got Matt, you got people just backing off. He just gets into really harry smith and then he goes over scores the try good finish as well under a bit of pressure yeah tidy finish wasn't it because he had to be mindful of his feet and then to make that dive at the end we get we get so used to that we perhaps don't rate it as highly as we should but he's also mindful of the scoreboard as well and he can't panic he's got to get the Help! ball down So Huddersfield come again and there's a bit of a bounce to them now that maybe they lacked a little earlier as nagama will take it on they're looking to play from deep and get on the outside they got a penalty well doesn't this again lift them well, imagine another try maybe a conversion before half time that team talk's going to be a lot easier for ian watson on this side like we said at the start of the game like there's so much fight in this side they work really really hard they fit they're aggressive huddersfield but that magic is what's needed Here's Milner. Always with Russell and on to Kutcho. And then French bends his back and stops Murchie in his tracks. That in, when they give the ball in, Kudjo, there was a three. There was a three on two on the outside. If that goes to Jake Connor, don't miss chances. This is Russell again. Scuttering down that left hand side, and Connor's joining in as well. And there's three of them to make sure he's not going too far. He's not going to present too much of a danger on that occasion. Russell. It's with Kloon, back to Connor, quick hands as the defensive Wardle was approaching. Wallace can't make too much of it. Connor now, this is Kloon, looking for a miss out pass again, but it's underlined the word miss because he missed everybody. I'll give him a rap before, that was a real poor pass, that. That was a shocking pass from Kloon. You got to get them right. Now you've got players outside here. You got your, you got Ash Golding coming across, making up numbers. You go for that same cutout ball. Unfortunately, goes in front of the two, but then goes straight to the touch judge on the, off the field. So four minutes to half time. Wigan's ambition has just been bridled in a little in the last ten minutes or so by this fine Huddersfield response, but the Cherry and White still sitting on a very healthy lead here. 
So as you can see, Warrington turning around that earlier situation. They were trailing 4-0, but leading now by 12 points to four. And Adam Clune, the man who made the mistake, he's the man who gives the penalty away. Just trying to make up for that error. So Harry Smith will find touch. The very last thing that Huddersfield need here is to concede again, having yeah, got themselves not quite back in the game, but at least at the foot of the mountain. Yeah, they don't want to cancel out that Elliot Wallace try, do they? There's a nil. And Bevan French again. On to Harvey Hill. Nil. Four tackles left here the for Wigan. Coming here. French will kick it early, but that's superbly read by uh, Nagama. Now you can see the way that French and Field were linking up. He, he come flat off the line. He, you know he wasn't going to get the ball, Jay Field. You knew exactly that that kick was coming. It was called for. And good reaction from Huddersfield. No disrespect, Terry, but if, uh, if a prop forward can see that from the sidelines, <laughs> like an international centre out there on the pitch. A prop forward with glasses as well. You can't step into him. So Huddersfield making slow progress here, but happy to have stemmed a tide that was flowing against them not long ago. Well, they got numbers here. Connor inside for Hewitt. But they've reached the last here, and again inside their own territory, so it's dependent on Connor's boot to try and find something. Risky is beaten to it by Kieran, actually. He did well to get all that then, didn't he, Adam Kieran? You can't do it. And again, complete. there's a flop. Nah, you got and the refs work. have been pretty hot on this, haven't they? This year, the tackle was complete, then all of a sudden there's just hands on the the man who's on the ground. And again, when they, they look to shift the ball over here towards us, they've, on the right, there's options out the back. They, there's no problem with them creating chances and space on the outside. It's just maybe the last pass isn't the one that need, that's needed. Open square, Ollie! Hold it, 10, I'd wait. Go. Six tackles needed here from Huddersfield to ensure that um, they don't two. suffer any two more damage him. before that klaxon sounds. Smith, Mega, it's the burst of energy from him, and Three. the Move. ambition there was to keep that ball alive, but four Adam defenders Adam preventing Adam him from doing Adam that. O'Neill, now for Smith again into the little pocket. Harvey Hill will carry it on. Testing time for the Giants' defence. O'Neill spinning it left to Smith. Smith's got numbers on the outside, including Farrell. Farrell running into the uh, meaty shoulders of three. So last play in this set, and possibly the last time Wigan have hands on ball in this first half. Unless they can produce a, another set here. Smith goes over the top. The kick from French. Should be Connor, and oh well, he took a risk there, he took a gamble, but it's just about paid off. Oh, hang on, Adam. Yeah, someone's in the bin Adam saying something out of turn. Adam Kieran Do you know? is off for 10 minutes. I'm not so sure whether Jake Connor's actually touched that ball before it goes dead. I think that's what Adam Kieran's actually complaining about. I thought that Jake Connor, when he's trying to shepherd that ball over that dead ball line, it just bounces up and does it touch his hand. And I think that's what Adam Kieran is saying to the referee, Jack Smith. Well, you want to have a look at that, sir? I think he touched it. Well, I suspect he didn't use the word sir and might have used a couple of words that he shouldn't have used, which is why it was a yellow card. But well, again, it's a, it's a clever kick, isn't it? For, for me. Well, he's thrown the ball away. He's thrown the ball away. That's what it's for. So Huddersfield last play in his first half. Clune is not going too far before he's settled. And Jack Smith blows time. So, well, we've had plenty of talking points again here. It looked as though Wigan were running away with it at 18 points to nil. But Elliot Wallace with that try back for Huddersfield has made it more of a competition. And Huddersfield will start the second half with the extra man as well after that late sin bidding for Wigan. We're back with full analysis in just a few moments' time.
St Helens host the Lee Leopard. <laughs> Breathtaking stuff. Wonderful drive from the state. That is outstanding. It is sizzling. It is simmering. Oh, take a bow. It's a beauty. Sit back, get the popcorn out and enjoy. Well, plenty more rugby league action to come, of course, over the next uh, couple of days. Tomorrow, it's a double header. Leeds against Catalan, 2.30 on Sky Sports Action. And uh, that is followed immediately by Salford against Hawkins the Rovers, 5.25 on the same channel. And they are two games that could be very, very close. And then on Sunday, Hull FC against London, both of them desperate to get their first win of this new Betfred Super League season. But only one of them can do that, and the other's misery will continue for another week at least. But half-time here at uh, the DW Stadium. Wigan leading by 18 points to four. They set off at quite a pace. Three tries in those opening 22 minutes, all converted by, uh, by Smith. But Huddersfield with a try back from Wallace. And, of course, the sin binning of Kieran, Adam Kieran, just as the hooter was sounding, just before the half-time hooter, means that Wigan start the second half with only 12 players. Well, it took them just 12 minutes to, to score a try, didn't it? And it come from Liam Marshall. A good step. He had two players in front of him, and he managed to just step off that left foot, find his way to the try line. A lot of plays in motion. That was the, the story in that in that first half. The Warriors, like we said in commentary, all turning up for each other. Whether they're looking at playing long or playing short, they seem to be doing it. Passing the ball, French, nice weighted pass to field. Kieran goes through and French backing up on the inside. They seem to turn it up. They were soaking up the pressure. They did that last week. Then all of a sudden, when they get a chance. You can see that the hesitation in the Huddersfield defenders. That's because there's too many cherry and white jerseys in front of them. They don't know who's taking the option, where it's coming from. And Adam Milley doesn't help you. And you have a swinging arm like this and you get 10 minutes in the sim bin, which doesn't help the cause. Just on 19 minutes, Adam Milner had to cool his heels, a little swinging arm, made contact with Tyler Dupree. And the referee, Jack Smith, just saying, look, you're going to have to sit down now, son. And then when Marshall gets another opportunity, it's that combination again. He knows where he is. He knows how to finish. As soon as that space is created from the inside, from Harry Smith and from Jay Field, you can see that Huddersfield, I just haven't got any answers to it whatsoever. But give him a chance. And it comes up. Clue, he threw one of these. It come off Marshall. He's looking for the intercept. Liam Marshall, you could see him, he's frustrated with himself, but Clune, even though he makes the, made the mistake earlier, he still comes up with that same pass, and Elliot Wallace goes over, that'll give him a bit of hope, and like I said, Adam Kieran, well, he just picks the ball, as it throws it away, won't let him get a quick tap, I thought that Jake Connor actually took the ball over the dead ball line, but 10 minutes in the sim bin, which will help Ian Watson's men at the start of this second half. Well, the most important stat of that first half is the scoreline. Wigan leading by 18 points to four. Possession shared, so that's obviously balanced up a lot in the second half of that first half. 94% completed sets to the 12 of Huddersfield's 15. Well, it's a lot closer than we thought it might have been at this stage earlier in the match. 18 points to four and Wigan down to 12 men and coming up next is full second half live and it should be a cracker Grand Prix is back, Formula One is back live only on Sky Sports and tomorrow the Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix race. You can see all the build-up from 
on Sky Sports Formula One, and the race itself starts at three o'clock. It's going to be another fascinating season in that high octane world. It's a high octane start to the Super League season as well. A couple of other games taking place tonight. St. Helens only leading by four points to nil against Lee at half time. And Warrington, who were 4 0 behind against Castleford, now leading by 20 points to four. And here, of course, Wigan 18, Huddersfield 4. Leeds, Catalan, Salford, Hawkins, the Rovers back to back from 3 pm tomorrow on Sky Sports Action. And then on Sunday, rounding it all up, Hull FC against London at 3 pm also on Sky Sports Action. It's around 15,000 here tonight. They were certainly, the home fans, entertained by what they saw in the opening 21 minutes when Wigan was scoring, not at will, but not far away from it. 18-0 they led after only 21 minutes. Liam Marshall already with two tries to his name. But Huddersfield have just put their heels in. They've stopped the scoring. They've got back themselves. Elliot Wallace in the 32nd minute. And Adam Kieran Sinbind as well. So Wigan start with 12 yeah. in his second half, Terry O'Connor. Huddersfield are going to have a bit more of a spring in their step here. Yeah, but you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? What, what's their attitude going to be like in this next 40 minutes? They've got to make sure that the, the opening 10 minutes, they're really quick. They're out of the blocks. Exactly the same as how, how the Warriors started the game. Like, we talked about it, or I talked about it in the... The first half, or don't be predictable, take chances, push, push on Ian Watson. Well, he'll know that he'll just want his big forwards, just trying to do a bit of damage around that rook earlier for Kloon and Russell. We've already seen Kloon supply a, a, a number of passes, one of them come off to Elliot Wallace, who, who went over and scored the try. And there's enough talent in this Huddersfield side to post points. And you know what, sometimes they've had the critics about being boring. But you can't have that much class in your side and be boring. It's just about playing on the front foot and getting those quick play the balls. The winger players coming out to a mighty roar. They had the World Club Challenge trophy on display a little earlier at uh, Robin Park, which is uh, the official headquarters of the Warriors, just a uh, hundred yards or so away from this DW Stadium. And there were plenty of fans out there enjoying that. in this second half. Referee Jack Smith ah, yeah, finding his way back to the middle here. You ready to go, Harry? We're good. What do we see at the start of this second period, Terry O'Connor? Do, do you anticipate Wigan will try to do what they did in the first half, re-establish their authority? You know, I, I, I would imagine ready, that what Mike Peters talked about at half-time would have been Again, the start, working hard, you know, we're one man down. Huddersfield are going to try and ask some questions of you. They're going to run hard. Oli Wilson, like I said in the first half, only knows one way. He's manhandled by three players, though. So it's what Warriors concentrate on and what they'll focus on in this next ten minutes. It won't be about free-flowing players, it'll be how they defend. Mason Masters with a second carry of the half, and Huddersfield working hard from deep inside their own territory. Could Joe again? He's had so many roles, hasn't he, down the yeah. years, Leroy I don't think you'd have anticipated playing down the middle right at the start <laughs> of his career, would he? And last week he was top tackler for Saints. Side side, Against Saints, Saints, sorry. Side side, Not square at the marker here, so that's um, it's a boost for the Giants. They get a penalty. This makes those hard yards a little easier to make. To the well, if you get a big, a big kick on here and, and just the the gift them, what, 20, 30 metres if they can get the distance on it. Like you said, to play the ball. It wasn't really a quick play of the ball by Kudjo, but the markers weren't set. The referee blew the whistle, and it's a set of six in Warriors half. Just giving them a chance to try to work over this Wigan defence here. So Wigan defence that's only conceded two tries before tonight, three. Now that... Um, Elliot Wallace has got over in the, uh, the three matches they played. Two of those are goals against Penrith last week, but they uh, they went without conceding any tries in the game against Castleford, but they're under threat again here. Nice play from Oli Russell. Russell, wasn't it? Here's Milner back on the inside for Clune and Connor leaping into action, looking out for the 
Sakurai Hewitt is going to be pulled down. Only a couple of strides away. Huddersfield are enthused here. Back it comes to Clune again. Short ball. Wilson with a drive. Wigan's defence is in tight. One play to go. It's worked back to Russell. Here's Connor. Shape for the kick, then gets the pass away, and Eason Masters runs into a, a, a brick wall, but he's got it away, and Adam Swift dives in at the corner. This could be sensational. <laughs> How did he sneak that ball out of that tackle? And has Swift got over? They're looking at the grounding. The original tackle's never been called complete. We have a live call on Kilton Trite. We have a live call. We have a live call for the Trite. To just go through to round him, please. He's in the field of play at this moment in time. He jumps from the field of play. He's in the field of play. It's in his right hand. If you can keep going on that one, please. And just jog it back slightly. And through there, nice and steady. Nice and slow, and pause there. Thank you, I've now made my decision. I'll wait for it on three, mate. Well, utter brilliance. Utter brilliance from Adam Swift with a finish. And the try's confirmed. And Huddersfield have struck twice now. Not only have they recreated confidence in their own camp, they might have put a few doubts in Wigan's minds. Well, exactly, that's what we said. They needed a, they needed a big start, didn't they? And that's what they've got. Two minutes into the second half. It's good play. You think that the tackle's all wrapped up, but look at that, the way he sneaks the ball away. Clever, outstanding offload. Said last week against St. Helens that they were too conservative for me. Here's Russell with a conversion that looks good. That looks very good. The flags are up to confirm. And Huddersfield, if you had any doubts, not anymore. They are back in this. 18-0 down, but now back to 18-10. And they are flooded with confidence. Well, that's it. Exactly. Ian Watson, what a spork of all. The 10 minutes that they've got with that new medical advantage. You go into contact. You manage to get your arm free. You've got a man outside you that knows how to finish. And now it's game on, Dave. Well, here's Swift again. It's, um, it's often been said about Adam Swift, hasn't it? One of the most underrated wingers in the game. But having scored the try, he's now made the mistake that has given Wigan front foot. And it's unlike Adam Swift, isn't it? Well, he's one of the best, one of the safest at the back. Well, he's made the error, scores the try, makes an error. And the Warriors just defending, hitting him, getting numbers in, taking him to ground, the ball comes out. Okay, then it's off the field for Wigan at the moment. Patrick Mago, I think, has just returned. Shot clock off. Heads in, let's go. Huddersfield desperate here to make sure they do not concede. Having got that try, having got themselves back within a glimmer, they do not want to concede again. But Wigan desperate to do just that. Here's Field. And the dance back to the middle to try and find something, but all he finds is a cluster of defenders. Move on! Ready and waiting. Oh, wait! O'Neill. Coming right to Hill. Harvey Hill with the, the drive and the thrust, but well matched again. O'Neill. Looking to his left. But Ellis is here, so he's clearly stayed on the field, Kane Ellis. O'Neill, another set of six here for Wigan. Tackle count starts once more. Thompson looking to blast his way over. Never mind the bodies in the way. He just wants to skittle them. But they stay in his way. O'Neill again. Now it's back to Smith. Smith out to field. Fields creating space. It's a hat trick. Liam Marshall with a hat trick. Two in the first half, now early in the second. But hang on, referee wants another look. Squares in the air. We're off to the video referee again. Looking at the grounding. Thank you. 
we have a live call on try on field. We're just checking the touchline and making sure he rounds the ball. So he's in possession. He's still got possession. At that point, you can clearly see green. You can still see green. But just let's go back to the back angle if we can. On that, and if we just go back today to make sure the front angle looks pretty clear, and we've just gone from here, and pause it there, that's fine. Let's go to the front angle again just to make sure the ball is down. He's in the field of play, the right hand stays on the ball. Thank you, I've now made my decision. Well, again, the tidiest of decisions and the tidiest of finishes. It is confirmed as a hat-trick from Liam Marshall. Again, the footwork was exquisite. Everything about that, that finish was terrific. He's got three and a swift response to the swift try because we're going to back in the driving seat again. Yeah, outstanding finish, isn't it? You could just see what he's got to contend with, the white line on the left-hand side of him, and he manages to just skirt that line and go in under a bit of pressure and score the try. He's a quality player. For me, Liam Marshall. So exciting. And that's just... Just took the wind out of Huddersfield. It's took the wind out of Huddersfield. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, a happy coach at the I'm moment, Matty now, Pete. Yeah. You're all right, you've got it. Cheers, Rushy. It looks like it's going to be yet another win, unless Huddersfield can find a way it back again. But if you going off that clock, and you can't just that. takes the wind out of the uh, giant sails, that score. 20, it's just stuck. But we've still got the time. Yeah. Harry Smith taking his time here. Tabs, will you tell me when uh, we're at 30 20? Yeah. So if you tell me then when we're at 30 20, Rushy will be able to. So far tonight has been uh, point perfect. Three out of three. Yeah, I'll rush it. Well, it's uh, not quite firm where he wanted it to go, but Wigan's still very much in charge. Two scores the lead, two tries, two goals, gets Huddersfield back level again. That's the way they've got to look at things here at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Just keep that scoreboard ticking over in your favour. And if it's worked in the first half, it's going to work in the second half. Jeffield again just creating chances out wide for Liam Marshall. And you know as a winger, when you've got someone like that and Harry Smith and Bevan French inside of you, you know that they will create some space because if they don't create the space for you they'll create the space for themselves well it has been an explosive start to this second half hasn't it Move together, Ollie. a little over Get three minutes ten. of the go first uh, second half played and we've already go got on. two You've tries and both forward, involving Luke. pretty spectacular finishes by the two wingers who scored two Move Sam. Square kick. hold go to mark of the good O'Neal Farrell surrender Standard. Young Harvey Hill now just saying to Kurt Ellis, he wants a bit of a tip on, he wants someone coming with him. Well, you like that from the, the young player, don't you? Talking to the senior players and telling them what he wants. Smith, behind the 40, will uh, put book to ball, but it's an awkward bounce here, which doesn't help the Giants. Wallace with a pick-up and return, but uh, just a wave of Cherry and White that came chasing after him. And not only that, dragging him back an extra yard or two yeah, as well. Nowhere to go. It's just, really? it's daunting, isn't it, for any winger to look up and just see that wall coming at you. The second tackle as well, you look at that line speed, it's more or less getting a gamma on the advantage line. Well, at this play the ball, there are still three Huddersfield players who are forward of the rock, so two tackles gone. They've not had all their numbers back to help clear the lines. Go for it, Also on the inside, here comes Masters. Four and Masters, the Cook Islands Kenny International. Go for it. Skip again by Russell, but into the unwelcoming arms of Willie Iser in the first instance. 
Thompson the Thompson there as well. Last play. So it's up to Connor to put it high. Oh, he has put it high. I tell you, that is that is huge. And Field as well to get himself in position and catch it safely. And immediately making a threat here, but Masters is there. It could have been dangerous, though. If you don't go for distance on a kick like that, and you're just going to take it five metres forward, you've got to make sure that you take Jay Field out of the equation and don't let him bounce across. Fortunately, they managed to get hold of him, but could have been dangerous because they didn't go for distance. O'Neill out to Farrell. Adam Kieran's back on the field, by the way. That sim bidding is over, so Wigan back to 13 men. Here's Hill. And Jackie Chan's on now to make his debut. Signed from Catalan. No, he's not the biggest of forwards, but I like him. He's really, really tough. It's a late call as well because Liam Byrne was down to be in the 17. He got injured in the warm-up, so Jackie Chan with a set of six here. So Jackie Chan might be able to get his hands on the ball because he's, uh, he's standing ready, and here he comes. So Jackie Chan on debut. First touch in cherry and white. O'Neill. Smith. Back to French. French misses. Kieran. Dances in, well watched by Swift. Good defensive play by the Huddersfield winger. French inside for Smith again. Hill's waiting, but it goes back behind him to Ellis. Ellis to Field, but Field's hunted down well by Clue. Couldn't run without the legs. Farrell takes over, Ellis drives it in. Four. Square Leroy, line Ash, come on. O'Neill. Hold. Go for. Shifting it left to Smith again, and here comes Field. Didn't fancy that way, didn't fancy the other, so which way is he going? In the end to the ground. Last play. Warble waits. Inside for Smith again. Smith will just chip to the corner. Looking to put Huddersfield under maximum pressure here. And that is just such a good kick, isn't it? It's taken by Wallace, but he's got nowhere to go. Winger defenders pushing it back behind the goal line. Well, what you like about the kick from, from Harry Smith, he's looking over to kick to the long side, and then he assesses what's in front of him, and he changes and says, right, I've put a bit of pressure on the winger there, get him back over the, the try line, we'll get another set of six. It's a clever play from Harry Smith. Instead of listening to the call and kicking long side, go to the short side and play what's in front of you. Even if Huddersfield had managed to uh, keep that ball in play, they would have been penned right on their own line, wouldn't they? And it would have been a huge set of six to clear. And instead, they've got a huge set of six to defend here. When you look how, how Wigan set up all the time. They love setting up centre field, and then they set up with the shape either side of the rook. Neil spins left, Ellis goes forward. And he seems to know the one way. So Neil again. Plenty of options right and left, comes to Smith. Smith with the short ball, Hill with the drive. Devon French was lurking just behind there just to keep those defenders guessing a time or two. Smith. Field has to stop and catch. Spins it wide. This Hill's defence has given time to just get up and make that tackle count. So last play again, it's um, Harry Smith who, again, they're looking for that pocket in that left-hand side. The pass is good, the kick is not played out, the referee says, so Huddersfield should escape with possession. Yeah. All right, the ref call, call that kick, the ricochet wasn't played out from Huddersfield. Huge sigh of relief, really, from the players. You know, when you watch the Warriors, like I said, they like setting up on the in the middle of the field. And when they have French on the right side, Jayfield on the left, the big key indicator to where the ball's going to go is Harry Smith. He's floating either side. If they do play to the wide side and the long side, you'll see a late movement from Bevan French or Jayfield to make the numbers up on the other side. And now a mistake. Oh, it's a penalty. Oh, penalty. I think the touch judge called that on the near side, didn't he? Eason Masters had it stolen from him. Yeah, well, at first, Jack Smith said that the ball was lost. And then, like you said, he's got the call from the sideline. Yeah. Clearing kick is not perhaps the best, but <laughs> right, at least Huddersfield have a chance now to enjoy some time with the ball in their hands. 
Off the wall, Tiaki! Square cave! Go on. Yeah, square one. Here's Kutcho. Garner was lurking with intent, two. but Liam Square! Kutcho keeps a hold. Two. Hold. Go two. Two. Working their way to the middle set halfway line. So I just really feel sad we're missing a few, of course, tonight. Jake Bibby and Joe Green will do. Would have been loving to have been Six playing again, against their more. former club this evening. And Luke Yates is a big miss as well for them, but they're carrying on regardless. Yeah, he's massive, Luke Yates, and defensively. What he does Go for the side, response, K10, cleans everything up in the middle of the field. Nice play from Ollie Russell back to centre. Oh, a little one-two in passes there as well, and Russell just bouncing off a couple and then finding himself as a sandwich. Move now, Tiaki! Square up. Tackle two, hold. Golding. Hold. Go two. Here's Kutcher. Okay. Back to Clue. On yeah. the inside again here, the tracking run comes from Hewitt. Held! Release three, Harry, stay here. Same Liam, tackle three. Five, three, three, go. Golding picks up and goes again here. He saw a bit of a, a gap behind the play, the ball. That's it, get on his shoulder. And he's got a penalty. Yeah, yeah. Well, a couple of penalties that they've managed to, to receive. Now all about a bit of speed. Ask some questions. And low, and low level force, but let's just see that. And the versatile Ash Golden, look at him, he's looking around, seeing what's around. And the video referee getting involved there and confirming it is just a penalty, no more. They'll be looking at what? Is it Jay Field over the top? It's okay, play on. Tap and run by Golding, but not very far before his, um, his legs slip from underneath him under the weight of that defence. Just a big effort forward again here. But Wigan holding on. And managing to force their man over the line. So Wilson has to step back 10 metres here to play the ball again. Golding. Here's Russell. Just trying to squeeze the pass out for Murchie to get his way through, but he's lost the ball. You know, the temptation was too much, wasn't it? And Murchie just manages to get through to nice ball from Ollie Russell We're to just get him again. to that opportunity Brilliant. near the line, unfortunately, is a mistake. He's had a really bright game tonight, hasn't he, Ollie Russell, and almost uh, in a try-scoring opportunity he reached out and he left the ball behind. Yeah, I, li I like him, Ollie Russell. And against last week, uh, against Saints last week, he was probably one of the best performers in that beaten side. He's a halfback that likes to go at the line. He'll take a tackle. He'll try and create something outside of him. So the pre is uh, back on the field, and we're going to back moving forward with a penalty for not square at marker. Well, that's it. You've got to be clean, haven't you? You've got to give yourselves a, a chance. Make sure when you get numbers into the tackle, you peel off, you get a set of marker, you're talking to each other. A little tap for the second marker telling you which way you've got to go. The second marker's got to keep the first marker a bit honest as well. On the foot, then. So O'Neill with the tap here. Wigan 10 short of the halfway line, but with six carries Oof. to have a go. Holy and I tell Wilson. you, that was a con oh, he's, collision there, oh, wasn't he's it? Gone, Wilson's yeah. gone. He's gone. But Matty English, gone. isn't it? Yeah. Matty English has gone yeah, here. Now, yeah, sorry, it was Matty English. I thought it was Ollie Wilson, first of all. Yeah, it's, it's Matty English Chan. Oh, Chan as well. You know, you come out the line, you're trying to, to lift your side, aren't you? You want your forwards to try and get a shot. Unfortunately for Matty English, he comes off second best. And Chaki Chan just going over, just checking on him, just giving him a tap, making sure he's OK. Well, Chaki Chan's OK. But again, the video referee's having a look at this. Yeah, we'll have to leave the field. Not, sh not sure we're going to see him back. I mean, he's got the 15-minute head injury assessment, but I think it's pretty clear he's not coming back. But you could tell by the way he got up and he, his leg buckled underneath him. 
Well, you know when a player's hurt by just the reaction, the way they fall to the ground, the way they then stumble to try and stay on the feet. And Harry Smith spotted it straight away and went straight over to him, caught him, so he didn't damage himself by falling over again. Again, quick intervention by the video referee who says uh, nothing to add to what the referee had seen. So simply a play the ball and on they go. And here comes French. And this now is Field. And Field's creating some space. Miski there finds it running up quickly, so has to come back to the middle just to hold his ground. Kieran's a dummy half. Ice is on the inside. Further to the middle it goes with Ellis. Now it's with Smith. Smith back to Farrell, who comes back against the grain of that oncoming defence, but battling hard as he might do, he's not going to get through. O'Neill. Ellis. Wigan just finding themselves unable to work their way through this treacle of Huddersfield defenders. Dupree's up to play, and it's the last play here. Field now up to the line, quick hands from Isa, picked up by Miski, surrounded by all those defenders. Little else he can do but hold the ball, and Huddersfield get it back again. And some pretty efficient defending there for yeah, the Yeah, there's a bit of panic as well, wasn't it? What was the four players? And they just managed to get all the Wigan. Obviously, the Warriors letting the ball move. Oh, penalty, Chaki Chan just gets off the line. That's what you want to defend as a player. And like Chaki Chan said before, not a big player, but very physical in defence. Love to try and whack him. And just can't quite get set. And just gives a penalty oh. away. Ball is spilt by uh, Salabia, who's new to the field. And the mistake gives Wigan possession back again. I'll be disappointed, Warney. Salabio, third game in a row, makes the mistake. That's when they need to keep all the possession. He had quite an impression when he started with Wakefield last year, didn't he, Hugo oh, Salabio? Yes. With a tackle that we won't forget. And he'll try to live that down. Here comes Chan. O'Neill rolling in again beyond Ellis and into the hands of Smith. Who He's his outside runner as a foil, but Huddersfield's defence is not buying that. O'Neill, again. This is a big set here. Huddersfield desperate not to concede. French with a pass away. Kieran steps into the gap, forces himself towards the line. A little bit of class there from the centre. Good take and step. But Huddersfield just about repelling. But Wigan come back this time on the left-hand side with Field. It's a stop and catch for Marshall. This gives the time for that Huddersfield defence to recover. Once ago, Smith favourite here to handle this six tackle play. And again, he's going back for that little pocket on that left hand side. And Farrell went off the chest and arms of Marshall and out of play. Yeah, just tried to be too smart then, didn't they? He knew that he just tried to get the ball to Wardlam. He couldn't do so. About speed again. Harry Smith looking up, assessing the situation, what's in front of him. Maybe they switched off over on the right hand side on the short side. Huddersfield, well, they were aware of the danger. Well, there's little of the 90 minutes left to play here. It is uh, certainly not a lost cause, but Huddersfield, in all probability, have to get the next points on the board. Two tries and two goals, the difference at the moment, but they get one back, and suddenly there is. An argument to say that they could win this game. Absolutely, they have to get that next Absolutely. one. Absolutely, it's not impossible, is it? But you, you're right. They've got to score. They've got to score next, and and for me, they've got to score in the next eight minutes or so. But for them to score, they probably need to be cleaner around the rook area. Look how slow that is. That play the ball doesn't give the halves much. Clue. Trying a running play on that occasion. Golding up to dummy half. Back it comes to Russell on the last. Picks the pass to Connor. Connor gets the kick away. Again, there's a oh, bit of horrible. there's a bit of curl and <laughs> swerve as that ball flies through the air. Miski's happy to let it bounce. And uh, he's chased down by Salabia. And we can start from there, so it's not a bad end to the set there for Huddersfield. That's exactly what they need now. There's a bit of urgency, Salabio then. Just making sure that they stop player one. Oh, they give a penalty away. 
And I think it was Ash Golden who gives the penalty away. What he does, the tackle, I think that the referee had called the tackle was complete, and then all of a sudden, they just try and slow it down by lifting the player up, spinning him around. And all they managed to do is, is give away 20 metres. 20 metres that they'd earned. You can see Ash Golden, look, he comes in, tackle was complete, throws him to ground. Well, again, Wigan giving a leg up back inside their opponent's half here. Move together on his heels! Hugo! Hugo! Here's O'Neill. French catches and helps on again. Two. Move square! Go two! Looking forward to that game tomorrow. Fantastic stuff leads against Catalan 2.30 on Sky Sports Action. And then the uh, Salford Hockey Hour game straight after that. Field back on the inside. Hold this line. Hold. Go. Heiser. Smith. Two to go in this set. O'Neill dashing up to dummy half again. Inside for Ellis. Back it goes to Field. Field now with a miss out pass that Swift intercepts. And he caught it on the fall. He might have been going the distance. He just needed a clean catch, didn't he? He'd be happy with what he got there. Yeah. You're right. All he needed was the ball. He made the decision. He pulled the trigger. He went in to get the ball. He got it swift. Here he is now. Well, they get the penalty. Mark is not well again. We've seen a lot of that tonight from both sides, haven't we? Just um, giving away penalties that have given their opponents a bit of a leg up. Getting out of yardage. Well, they're keen on it. The refs, aren't they? In the opening three rounds. Mark has... You've got to work. You've got to be squirt. Look at that completion rate for the Warriors, 96%. First. Move front, doesn't buddy. always translate into a, a winning stat, does it? Completion rate. Sometimes the teams that take a risk or two and maybe lose the ball also find a way of opening their opponents up by taking that risk or two. If you've got a team like sort of Warriors and you compete in that high and you've had the ball a lot of times, the nine times out of ten you're going to be in, in front on the scoreboard. Russell, this is Murchie. Paramatta man. Little sluggish as he gets back to his feet. Connor trying to direct Salabio. <laughs> My goodness, he went for route one. O'Neill got there though to get in his way. Golding back to the middle. Clue. Here comes Connor again. Connor with a kick to the corner on the last settle. Up goes the challenge. The ball bounces back. We're going to have possession back again here. And suddenly a chance to go the distance. Waddle helps it on. It's Marshall now. Marshall's got some scoot. Defenders are there closing in. And eventually it's Nogalma who gets back to make that tackle. But look how much distance he's covered. And Wigan now with Farrell. Who can get up there in support? There's some tired bodies out there. But it's Smith who finds himself all alone. <laughs> And uh, Farrell has gone down injured. And I think Eason Masters might be in trouble here. Yeah, was it a late, was it a late hit on Farrell? Incredible, isn't it? You're building pressure on the line. Salabio goes through. He's looking for somebody with him. They go for the kick. They pat it back. And then it's just pounced on by Wigan. And they go race up the other end of the field for 70 metres. And now on the back of that, is it a penalty? And Harry Smith, well, two scores in front, go for another two points here, take it to three, you can just see Masters. Be really careful, he said. He's got to be careful here. He just hits Liam Farrell off the ball, bit of a shoulder charge on him. You know, and you've seen them Simbind as well. Oh, I got. Thought he was calling Ethan Masters out there, but he's not. But you, <laughs> again, he's looking nervous because last year, we've seen Simbinins last year, this year. Like that. And that's just a lazy play. It's like you get there and you think, right, I've made the effort, I'm just yeah. going to finish the tackle. But after the first couple of weeks, and obviously we've not had eyes on the other matches tonight, but I think a lot of people will look on tonight and enjoy the way it's been refereed yeah. in respect of we've not seen those Simbinins and red cards 100%. that have been debatable. Yeah, let, let the refs ref the game. Be a bit, the refs need to be a bit more lenient with the players. The man who's sat in the, the video ref box, he could call for a number of things if he sees them, but just let the ref 
get a flow of the game. That's what the fans turn up to see. They want to watch the players play in a game that they enjoy. Big kick here, Harry Smith puts this over, and he has put it over. And Wigan now have a three-score lead. So that mountain that Huddersfield have got to climb is suddenly ice-capped because they have to score three times in the 12 and a bit minutes that remain. And that is a tall order now and that's against made, this Wigan side. And that's made it really difficult. When they go for the kick, Wardle comes up with it. Give it over to Marshall. They don't panic, do they? They're a nice composed side. They know that things are going to happen and come off further down the line. And it did, obviously, they get the penalty, they get the two points. 14 points in 12 minutes, going to be difficult. I've seen Jake Connor in the last couple of sets that Huddersfield have had the ball. He's trying to influence everything, he's pushing players out of the way because he wants the ball. Young top formers on the field. So it's not a debut tonight. He, uh, he made his debut a couple of years back against Hawkingston Rovers, but he's not played since, not in Cherry and White. He had a couple of games at Wakefield last year in Super League. Hey, look at him, I think it was Whitehaven, all the he was at Witness as well. They got high hopes of him. Chatting to one of the backroom staff at Wigan earlier, and they were saying he's a very exciting young talent. He's got a couple in front of him in, in the shape of Brad O'Neill and Cruz Leeming, but Leeming might be out for a week or two with that ankle injury, so... Chance maybe for Forber to not lay a claim, but certainly catch the eye in the next couple of weeks. Middle top, that's top. a beautifully struck kick. That, what that, a spiral. that spins on its axis. Makes it impossible to catch on the fall. And O'Connor's lucky with a bounce and Swift brings it forward. Not tackled in the first instance. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, Adam Kieran's claiming he couldn't hear what the referee was saying. Oh, and that's why him. he kept a hold. But we could hear him. <laughs> he could hear him. He just knew exactly what he was doing. No, a nice link up play between Jake Connor and Adam Swift. Adam Kieran knew exactly what he had to do to slow that player down. He's a terrific player, though, Adam Kieran, isn't he? Could be one of the signings of the season. But there's a few candidates for that, and it's only week three, so it's going to be fascinating to watch them all go through in this next eight or nine months. Here's Milner. They're moving at pace here, but it suddenly comes to a full stop with a tattle from Mago. Here's Milner again. This is Russell. Back to Connor. Connor's got magic in his boots, but he can't get away from the tackle of Willie Isa. Russell. Cut Joe with a quick hands. Hill again. This is uh, good, efficient handling from Huddersfield. Sharpness under duress, but in the end, it's. No passage forward for Wallace. Last play, ten minutes to go. Huddersfield would dearly love something here. It's Connor who tries to get up there. It's Kieran who did, but it spills into the hands of Jack Murchie. And it's an absolute gift, it looks like. But again, we're going to the video referee. But has Jack Murphy, Murchie, just been given a real present here? Of a live call on the field and try. So we're going to go to the onside offside first of all. So we pause it on his foot. Everybody to left hand side that we need to be concerned about is onside. So we can go on from here and we're now looking at the challenge. So nice and tight. Everybody's competing for the ball there. Run it on from here. And we just go back. That appears on that angle that the first touch is by Wigan. So that is by Wigan. Still by Wigan, so we're playing on. It then gets the hand of the Huddersfield man. Let's just go back so we can see anything from the corner. At this point, we have a live call on the field of a try.
again, that is off the Wigan man. So now we've got it in the hands of the others to play it. We can drag it on from here. We'll keep going on this angle. This angle looks fine. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Pause it there, thank you. I've now made my decision. Well, 10 minutes left to play, and Huddersfield are not going away. Try is confirmed, and they have again just a sight of a possible win here. It's still a tall order, but they have got hope now. Yeah, exactly. He's decent signing, hasn't he, Jack Murchie? Next Parramatta forward. The two points from Ollie Russell. And they've got a chance, and that's all that they were after. Look, you put the ball in the earth, you've got to come up with something. It's a great kick. And Jake Connor just does enough, along with Murchie, to just unsettle them at the back. And the chance that they need, they've got. And what are they now? Eight points behind, nine minutes to go. Well, the way that they played the last five or six minutes, and like I said before, you look at the side, they've got some talented players. Smith restarts and Wigan know that they're going to have to be completely focused here because Huddersfield suddenly with an opportunity. They have to score twice yet, so you'd still make Wigan very warm, if not hot favourites, to go on and win it from here. But Huddersfield have a chance. Kudjo takes it forward, but Wigan's defensive effort here is huge. Huddersfield are going to need something special. To just get away from this grip, Hill. That's a great carry from the England international. A little bit of momentum, pushing Wigan back on the back foot again. And Ellis is there with a big hit down the middle. Yeah, nice shot. Jake Conroy with it. A big kick. And he's found plenty of grass here. The uh, the bounce is not too awkward, and Miski can pick up. But Huddersfield's defence. He's full of enthusiasm and up there quickly. Yeah, that's a good Three chance, that, line. isn't it? They know now that the, the clock's against them. They've got to try and force an area. If anyone's got a shot in them here, they'll be trying to force the area to hit under the ball. Back here now. All square off. Here's Kieran. Running into all those defenders. Not getting too much further forward. Tom Forber at dummy half. We can now just look to get to the kicks and close the game down. Four. Move on him. Square up. Here's Forber again. Still a couple of tackles in this set. It's Smith back to Farrell. Farrell's looking for a corridor there. He's run behind his own man twice here, so he. Well, the ref telling him he's got to go yeah, down. Has to go down five, and concede. Forber. Smith. Getting a kick low and five. hard and looking to try and ping it over the top of. Uh, the winger, but it's brought back by Wallace. And Huddersfield with a lot of ground to cover here. Nagama, Connor. They're going a little wide, and they've knocked on. And it's the man who gave them hope a moment ago who's uh, spilled possession here. Wasn't the best of passes in his way. I don't think it was aimed at him anyway, was it, to Murchie? I'm not sure who it was aimed at, really, from, from Jake Connor. I thought on the first tackle. And Wallace did ever so well to bounce out the tackle. He got a quick play of the ball. They looked to shift it on that win. Unfortunately, that pass wasn't good enough from one of the most experienced and probably one of the best players in a Huddersfield jersey. And that's what can happen when you chase the game, isn't it, Dave? So, Wigan. Wigan set fair here. Just getting news of the crowd, by the way, 15,357 here tonight. So, again, it's another big crowd at the DW Stadium. And it looks like they're going to be cheering their heroes home, most of them. Farrell. Happy to claim the ground. Six minutes to go, so time very much in Wigan's favour. It's back with Thompson with another of those big explosive efforts. Here's Forber. To his right hand side, he has Dupree, and that will win it. That's the score that confirms it.
Tyler Dupree bouncing over. Wigan extend their lead again. And they're keeping up their 100% start to this Betfred Super League season. Well, Tyler Dupree, he may have scored the try, but just look at the work from young Tom Forbert when he gets out from dummy half. He's a powerful player, Tyler Dupree. And what a start to his Wigan career. Already three trophies and three medals in his cabinet, but look, Forbert gets out, he just pulls in. The man who's defending tight to the rook, and Tyler Dupree, well, he celebrates, but it's the work of the hooker. Brilliant effort. Good support from his prop forward, but it was made by that young hooker, Tom Forbert. Well, it's quite a family history, isn't it, Tyler Dupree? We've mentioned this many times. Uncle Billy Joe, an NFL champion with the Dallas Cowboys, his granddad, a blue singer in New Orleans. And now this next generation is a try scorer <laughs> for Wigan Rugby League Club. Some stories to tell in the, Do you know, in the front of the fire at Christmas down the yeah, years. And he, he's done it tough, Tyler Dupree, because he was one of them players who didn't get a scholarship when he was younger at Leeds Rhinos. He then went in for a trial. He worked really hard. He got himself fit. He got the chance. He was released. He went to Oldham, went to Widnes, picked up by Salford, and now he's a, as a World Club Challenge winner. Incredible story. Well, Harry Smith doesn't miss this one. You can... Uh, you can bet on that right in front of the sticks. It's not to say he's going to hurry it, but he would back him every day of the week, and he has put it over. And Wigan now extending that lead to 30 points to 16. The game running away from Huddersfield finally with four minutes left to play. Yeah, well, they were under pressure, and there was, I'm sure there would have been some nervous players, and Matty Pete, when they were just leading by eight points, surely would have been. Just sending now messages what he's seen from his vantage point up top. But well, they managed to get the result. Four minutes to go, 14 points in front. Well, that's game set and match for me. Well, here comes Thompson. You could see him just shifting that ball under his right arm to have a right crack there. Well, Huddersfield's defence remains firm. As soon as he touches it under his wing, he's not going to pass it, is he? Farrell. You've got the task of uh, choosing Three, player of the match tonight, Terry, so put the thinking cap on. Don't, you don't have to make a decision just yet, but <laughs> you can have a thought or two. Here's French, inside for Miski. Again, change of directions, players Three, running out towards Three, the wing, players back. cutting in. Hold, hold, it's a rare game in recent hold. times when Abbas Miski hasn't featured on the scoreboard. Smith with a kick over the top, feels chasing after this, but... Taken safely enough by Comer, who in turn is threatening the counter-attack. And the little flick to offload keeps it interesting for his side. Boris goes down. Here's Swift. He's putting his chin forward and his chest out. Oh, it's a bad fumble, but it has gone backwards. Out together! Go, Luke, you're not square, Luke! Milner. Clune switching the point of attack again for Connor, who's put a lovely little kick through. It's touched by a Wigan player, so even though they get it back again, it will be Huddersfield to get head and feed here, and that was created from Jake Connor. Yeah, well, that's Jake Connor all over, isn't he? When you think that nothing's on, not sure what you're going to do. He's not sure what he's going to do. I think Jack Smith says that when he kicks this ball, it's Adam Kieran that makes the mistake. He taps the ball on. Kieran just makes a, a swing for it, prevents the ball from going out and conceding a try. So another chance here. Clue. Nagoma. Bounced off him, it's kept alive. I think the referee's mindful that he could go to the video referee here. Wallace has finished. Well, there was certainly a ricochet or two in the middle of all that. No try on the field. Let's see what the video referee has to say. Thank you, we've got a live call on the field of no try. So you need to check to make sure that there is a knock-on in these sequences that has been ruled on field. So if we can 
gone from this for a live college no try that it's hit the Wigan player first it's got the ball there keeps going keeps going keeps going just go back on that one sure now I'm probably gonna have to look at this from the other angles it's come forward clearly does it hit the head here of the Wigan player there I'm just going to look on the side view of this. We're just going to roll it through from here now. It loses possession of the ball. It then hits the Wigan player's head. Thank you. I've now made my decision. So I think they're going to be denied here. Would have been a little bit of consolation, but I don't think it's going to stand. No try confirmed on the board, and we're going to get possession back again here. So, Terry, with just under two minutes left to play, we get to your deliberation of player of the match. You know, there's been some good performances from the Warriors after backing up from winning the, the World Cup Challenge last week. Thought Jay Field's been good, French has been good, Smith's been good. But for me, the man who started it all off in the opening, field. what was it, 20 Wait minutes? Up, Liam Marshall, sensational, Go either on. side of the ball, scoring the hat-trick, and obviously what he's done in yardage as well, big play from him. Move now, Ollie. Oh, Sometimes scoring here. three tries oh. helps in decision-making, doesn't it? <laughs> There's been many a player over the years who scored hat-trick, never got man of the what, match. Uh, famously, was it, was it Sean Briscoe all those years I ago? I think it was, he yeah. five tries and he didn't get player of the yeah. match. You're still disappointed now when you yeah. see him. Our old Run! friend Dave Hadfield, and we miss him very much, had us. He was behind that decision, and he never lived it down either. French gives the ball away, and Huddersfield have it back again. It's a, just a bit of a scrappy ending to this game. Here's Swift. This is Russell. Inside for Hill. Last 30 seconds of play. Tackle one. Go Masters. Two. Move, Leon. Tackle two. Milner. Goal two. Into that dummy half roll. Two. Russell Nine, along the line three. to Clune. Clune further right to Connor. Here's two, two. Nagama. Nagama stepping back on the inside to see if there's a safe passage there, but Cherry and White just close the scene. Nagama goes down, and that tackle signals the end of the game Wigan keeping up that 100% record Huddersfield the consolation of having got points on the ball tonight and having put up a, a real fight at times in this game but ultimately you have to say a scoreline that reflects the dominance of Wigan well they were brave and right from the kickoff I thought Matty Pete's men were absolutely on the way that they started the game three tries in the opening 20 minutes the fans turned out to see the new World Club champions and they certainly entertain them. Free-flowing game, 